what's up everybody our next podcast um is going to be on the ufc 270 on the two main uh the main event and the co-main event uh check it out What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Yamato Damashi podcast. Today, we're going to look at UFC 270. In particular, we're going to look at the top two fights, two main events, two championship fights, uh, you know, big heavyweight fight and also a big flyweight fight, a big trilogy fight. So, Ensign, let's let's start with the heavyweights. Uh, we've got Cyril Garn, who's the interim champion after that, that win against Derek Lewis, taking on Francis Ngannou. Uh and it's, you know, first thoughts on that fight. How, how do you sort of foresee that fight playing out? My first thoughts are um, Shirogan doesn't move like a natural uh, lightweight, a heavyweight. So he moves like a lightweight. Um, all different angles. Uh, he has enough power. He's a big boy. I think he's going to give Ngannou a lot of trouble. In fact, they were sparring partners. I think they both know each other well. Of course, it's been three years, so there's been a lot of changes. Mm-hmm. So you really can't predict anything. The the scary thing about that whole fight is Nugano's one punch power. Yeah. I think he has that one punch power to end the fight in one single one one connection. You know, so that's a danger for Siragan. Uh Siragan knows that. Um Siragan's been in there with uh dangerous strikers before and has lasted uh, the full fight. Yep. So, you know, it's a, I think it's a matter of um, who's going to be on and who's going to be uh, on their game. Mm-hmm. I, I, well, you know, I'm close to the extreme couture guy, so I tend to sway with wanting Nungano to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if I were to have to bet on it, I think the movement of uh, Sirogan, the different uh, angles that he's going to show him. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a little bit too much. And I think if Surogan plays a smart fight where he doesn't um, go into the gunfire and goes into the, the, the tries to bring into the later rounds where I think Nugano will get a little bit tired, that might work to his favor. So if, you know, if I had to pick somebody, of course, there's that danger of that one punch from Nugano. I don't know. I just, I just see um, Cyril coming up on top in this fight. I just think his movement and his, uh, agility is is going to be a big difference in his stamina Mm -hmm. what about you it's a tough one right because there's so much noise uh not even about the fight right with Nganu you know everyone's talking about his contract what is he gonna do next where he's gonna do boxing and you kind of think oh does that mean he's not focused as much on the fight um but as you say sort of extreme couture good camp I feel like that will keep him grounded enough where you know maybe there's a lot of stuff going on outside uh, you know, with training, but actually when it comes to training, I think he's, you know, going to be getting, they'll come up with a good enough game plan. I mean, that's kind of, you know, what Extreme Couture was always famous for, right? Having brilliant game plans to, you know, to cover uh, fights like this. So I'm kind of, I'm actually swaying towards Nganu. I, I just totally get what you're saying. And even Garn is actually the favorite in this fight, which could be one of the first times in a while that... Uh, yeah, like, can you remember oh, many man. times where a challenger was the favorite? It's a bit, um, the camera, there's none that really sort of ring to bell uh, right now. But um, yeah, I, I, I think I'm going to pick Nganu. I feel like, I feel like definitely Gan will try and implement that game plan of maybe, you know, circling and, and out jabbing him for five rounds. Uh, but I feel like Nganu has more weapons than maybe like a, a Derek Lewis where, you know, I, I feel like Nganu gets a bit of a bad rep for the stamina for the first Stipe fight, but I feel like he's corrected a few things. And I, I, I think, and I kind of hope if I'm honest, I hope he gets the win. So, uh, well, you know, you know, you know what the big thing is with that is uh, the thing I'm thinking is, uh, you know, Eric Nixick's going to have a good game plan. Yeah. Those guys are smart. Those guys are going to come in with something really smart. So, I, geez, man, you know, I don't think it matters on who did what in the sparring. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of weight on that. Even, right? you know, even the, you know, 
I, it might also even nullify the agility, the movement, because uh, Eric then will probably have a plan for that. So for me, you know, um, I don't know. I just have a gut feeling that um, the belts are going to change hands. But, you know. Wow, okay. <laughs> it's up in yeah. the air, man. You know, it could, it could go either way. So that's what makes an exciting fight, you know. Yeah. It could go any way. It's super exciting. Looking forward to it. Yeah, no, I... There's always that feel of a heavyweight fight, right? I hope it is. Uh, I hope there's a bit. There's some drama in it, right? Because the Lewis and Garn fight was a little bit uh, not the funnest of fights. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hope uh, you know it becomes a bit of a war and just yeah, see what happens. But yeah, yeah. Um, just just on the whole and Garnu thing, right? So all the all the talk is that this is his last sort of fight on his contract. Um, you know, he's talking about potentially boxing Tyson Fury or maybe another big name. Um, I mean, what, what do you, what, what do you make of that approach? It's kind of, I always think it's a little bit strange when a fighter is so public about their contract, right? I, you know, I would almost want to leave that to my management then. Uh, it's a real unfortunate thing. Because I believe as a fighter, they should worry about training and training only. Um, any type of contract negotiation should be held by the manager. Uh, they should, um, uh, of course, keep it out of the media. Keep it out of, you know, it should be between the manager and the and the promotion. And he he could speak his part about, you know, he wants to box too. But it's, I think it's a little, it's a little more public than I think it should be. Mm -hmm. And I think Nungano is uh, thinking about it a little too much than he should. I don't know. Maybe that's what sways me to think that um, Gan is going to have the upper hand this fight. I just feel like there's so much things going on in uh, Nungano's head. Yeah. So, I mean, the fighter just should train and fight. That's it. That's why they have managers. That's why they have coaches because the fighter just trains and fights. So, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I know. That, that's sort of in the back of my head when making the pick that, you know, there is all that noise yeah. going on in the background. But, like you say, it's kind of you, you pay a manager to do that, right? And and yep. the, the media sort of hurling questions at him about like the fine print of yeah, his contract. Yeah. And, you uh, should just shut it down and say that's my manager job. Yeah, definitely, right? So um, so the co-main event is the big flyweight trilogy fight. Um, I'm curious to get your take. You know, I just uh, I just like Bert Morano, the the person he is, the attitude he has, the you know the the joy he brings into the you know the he you can clearly clearly say he enjoy, he loves what he does and doesn't talk shit such a nice guy amazing ability i mean how can you not cheer for the guy mm -hmm. you know i just think that the the first fight how he outlasted he made it through the first round and he i i thought he won the the first fight because i thought he won the later rounds mm -hmm. um i i thought that the second fight, he totally dominated. You know, Figueredo says something about his, uh, he um, he felt sluggish or he didn't feel good. You know, I don't know if it's excuses or, you know, it might be a good point because he did look, uh, he didn't look like the guy I saw in the first round in the first fight. You know, but um, I don't know, Mor Mor Moreno's a just stamina monster. I think he can take the, the big punch. And I, I, I would, I tend to sway towards Morano. I don't know. It's, it's just maybe it's just because I really like the guy, mm -hmm. and I love the way when uh, Figueroa is trying to talk smack to him on the press conference, the way he reacts and the way he's like, "Oh my God, why are you doing this?" You know, it's like yeah, such yeah. a nice guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that more than a professional view, I think it's a personal view that. I just love the guy Moreno and I kind of want him to win. So I pick him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I, you yeah, know, personally, he looks like a great, you know, nice, like one of the nicest guys in the sport. Great champion. But yeah. And he, and, and as you say, he's got all the sort of professional tools as well, right? A great chin, great heart, you know. Um, I kind of see it playing out the same way, like maybe a submission late in, later in the fight. Um, the, I guess the interesting aspect, um, you know, of the fight is the fact that, uh, Figueredo uh, is um, been training with Cejudo as well, right? And he's saying like, "I'm gonna bring back his head to the king." <laughs> it's like, okay, it's a, a different aspect of it. But um, 
I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll see more wrestling from Figueredo in this fight if he's been doing quite a lot of training with Henry. It'll be. I'm really curious to see how this goes. I think it's a, a great uh, set of trilogy fights. I'm sure this one's going to be just as good as the other two. So uh, looking forward to it. I think Figueredo's chances in the first round when he still has all the power and um, he's definitely more powerful than uh, Moreno. So if he can implement his power in the first round, it would be really interesting to see. Mm -hmm. But if it goes past the first round, I, I just see uh, Moreno's stamina and his pressure just uh, starting to fold for Guerrero. And, you know, he's been broken before. And that's not a good thing if you've been broken by a fighter before and you get into the, you know, the, the grind of the, you know, the, the last two or three championship rounds. I mean, psychology that could, that could really play a big part Mm -hmm. in how he feels and his confidence. So I, I said Moreno, man. <laughs> Who's yeah, the underdog? Who's the favorite? I don't I think it's pretty even. I think Moreno is the favorite. Um, oh, but pretty much even odds. odds on this, but yeah, being I think the favorite. it's pretty close. Um, just on that, though, because, like, you you had rematches with fighters um, in in the past. And I'm curious, you know, it, you uh, you rematched Joe Estes. Uh, I'm is there um, a different feeling going into a fight with someone that you've already had a fight with compared to maybe a fresh opponent? Yeah, well, for me, um, I lost yeah, my first fight with Joe Estes. So there was a lot of things to prove to myself. You know, I, I lost being in the guard position and being outpointed in the guard. So I, I, you know, made it a point to myself to, if I get in the guard position again, I'll do something different. I'll be more aggressive. So, you know, for me, I, being, a, being the loser on the first fight, I had the um, opportunity to, to fix what, I, you know, fix what is broken. You know? So I think on the loser's end, they, they have more of a, I think they have more of a, um, they, they, they're in a, they're on a, they have more of the upper hand because uh, they have a lot of things they can correct and change. Besides the psychological, um, handicap where they've been broken by before i think there's a lot of things in the fight that he can change he knows what gave him trouble and you know it's going to be a matter of how he can change it and if mm -hmm. moreno can actually present a little different type of problem instead of the same type of problem so be interesting I, I'm, yeah. I'm interested to see what Sir henry cejudo has added to figueredo's game or you know has um, awakened in his game yeah no definitely Awesome. Okay, great. Well, uh, you know, the fight card uh, will be airing shortly this Saturday. Um, we'll try and get this uploaded ASAP. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the fights. And uh, any, any plan? you just watching it at home? Yeah, I think uh, Siosh is going to come over. We're going to all watch it together. So nice. it's a heavyweight fight. He's trained with Francis Ngano. So mm -hmm. he wants to, you know, root for Francis Ngano to win. So um, we're okay. going to all have a little gathering here and watch it on um, USC Fight Pass. Sounds fun. Well, fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, we'll speak to everyone in a while.